from the Joy News Centre. This is News at 8. It's a prime time news here on Joy News on Multi TV. Thank you for joining us. Coming up, MPP General Secretary Sir John and one other hold before the Supreme Court over comments considered a scandalous by the court. President John Mahama meets some of his colleague presidents in the sub region to discuss maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. Government's plan to build 10 new teacher training colleges comes under fire by a group which insists the existing institutions are underutilized. New law requiring real estate firms to incorporate renewable energy sources in their building plans comes into force. And in business, poor power supply and high taxes cited as the most topmost constraints to businesses in second quarter AGI barometer. We also have sports, showbiz and international news all coming up in the next 60 minutes. News at 8 with Israel Live. New Patriotic Party General Secretary Kujo Usufri and a member of the party's communications team, Hope Singh Adoye, have been summoned to appear before the Supreme Court on August 14. They are to defend comments they made which are considered, scan as considered to scandalize the court and, quote, lower its authority and credibility in the eyes of the general public. My colleague, Anio Sabute, he has been covering the Supreme Court and he has uh, the summons. And he joins me now with details. Uh, good evening to you, Ani right. So, what does uh, the summons say? Okay, essentially, so I have two summons here one for General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Sir John, and that of uh, Hobson Adoya. And it's signed by W.A. Atuguba, that's a JSC. And uh, it says that it's in connection with the alleged comments that Sir John made on Oman FM. That is on the 25th of uh, June 2013 on a talk show on Oman FM in the trade language described the presida presiding judge of this panel court as a hypocritical joker who pampers the council for the National Democratic Congress, Chajuchi Kata, but habitually scolds the council for the MPP, unquote. That a said judge habitually, quote, frowned like a voodoo deity. It continued to say that, quote, do they think we are stupid? You sit there and frown like a voodoo deity. When Addison is talking, you shut him down and beat him with sticks. But when it comes to Chachu, when he gets angry, you ask him apologetically if he's angry. Chachu's cross-examination was, for how many days? Didn't Atuguba and Co see that the questions he was asking were nonsensical? He continued, he said, what hurt me most is that, is that man that you call Atuguba or Atu, Atugubi, whoever you say is called. What I mean... I mean that judge, that your judge, that judge that you call Atugu, whatever he or he, he's funny. He continues that, that the Supreme Court had prepared mashed yam in palm oil, that's a tough and a kind of delicacy, and stuff it with egg for Chachu to eat. Unquote. Again, continues that. Just so it, it goes on to you know essentially they've transcribed exactly what he must have said on uh, on this particular tape. How about uh, Hobson and Adoy? For Hobson and Adoy, uh, and according to the Supreme Court, they said uh, which was also captured in a Daily Post newspaper and a title which I cut the heads of NDC supporters if Supreme Court declares President Mahama winner. And then he is reputed to have said the same similar thing on Time FM on Oboise on the 26th day of June 2013 that the NPP will go on a head cutting spree, cutting off heads, cutting off the heads of NDC supporters should the Supreme Court declare President Mahama the president. 
the okay. winner of the. Of now, the I, I recall uh, back then during one of the sessions uh, exactly what the Justice Atuba said. Uh, let's pause a little and bring you back that moment in court when uh, the president of the Supreme Court, uh, just, Justice uh, Justice Atuba, he dropped hints that they were going to invite uh, Sir John and uh, one other to uh, come you know, to answer to some of the issues that they had raised. So let's, let's take a listen. More terrible things are coming. There was uh, a publication, I think, in the Empire front page, and then some tape being played over the radio, uh, all sorts of things. We, uh, in the course of time, will deal with that. And there's another one, we shall cut the heads of NDC supporters. The Supreme Court declares President Muhammad winner and all sorts of things. Uh, after we had dealt with uh, somebody who made similar utterances, publication in the inquiry or something I was referring to in the tip concerns a person going by the description, say John. I understand he comes to this court and says, We don't know these people. Uh, you know, this thing is there. Captured, there's a tape and all that on it. And um, yes, we've called for the tape and we'll advise ourselves uh, accordingly. And this person talking about cutting of the heads, we'll, we'll, we'll also advise ourselves accordingly. All right, so this was Monday, the 8th of July, during the election petition hearing. So what has the someone say that these two have done? Okay, so let's start first with the Kojo Osue Free, popularly known as John. And he said, uh, you, Kojo Osue Free, are hereby ordered to appear before this court on the 14th day of August, 2013, that is Wednesday, at 10 o'clock in the forenoon or so soon thereafter, as you can be heard, to show cause why you should not, you should not be committed to prison for contempt of this court, for thereby, one, scandalizing the court, two, lowering the authority and credibility of this court in the eyes of the general public, and three, exciting hatred and will, and a will towards the first and second respondent. You wonder about the first respondent you are talking about, the president and the second respondent, that is the electoral commission. Now, for Hope Senadoe, the same thing, they are to appear before the same okay. thing, but these are the penalties. So, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a, just, a, just about the same thing. And I, I know that uh, we've yeah, been for making him, some attempts. It, it's in respect of the third respondent for Hope Senadoe, that is the NDC. Okay. Absolutely. Now, we've been making some attempts to try to reach uh, Sir John to speak to the issue. Uh, what what, has, what have you been able to get from him? Yeah, you know, uh, when, when you came, we called him up and he said he's been out of town, but he just arrived. He's not received the summons, but uh, he will avail himself because the court has invited him. He's going to go there and uh, explain exactly what he said. Okay. Hope now there too, we've spoken to him. He's also said that, I mean, the issue that the things he talked about have been taken out of context because he said he was in a banter with an activist of the NDC, and the guy made a comment that there will be civil war. And according to him, he said, then if you are insisting to, yeah. that there will be civil war, then, you know, this is okay. how we're going to go. But, you know, on Wednesday, when he goes to the court, you have the opportunity to explain all these details. Right. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Anio Sabute. Now, we're joined on the line now by Samsung Ladi Ayeni. He is the host of News File here on uh, Joy News on TV, as well as Joy FM on radio. Good evening to you, uh, Samsung. Good evening, Israel. Right, you've been following this court hearings closely. Are you aware of the summons? And uh, is it possible it couldn't have reached uh, John as he claims, even though it's all over town now? It doesn't matter. Now that it's being discussed on radio, there is uh, what we normally call a certain kind of service that's been made to him. It's a service to the whole world. The whole world has gotten to know about it. Okay, so essentially he can't say that he hasn't received the summons, and so uh, he... He's not going to but, appear. But, but, but since the court is a court of record, and but since uh, he has been specifically mentioned and the summons is directed at his passing and Hobson and Doye, it is only fair that they receive it. And I'm sure they'll receive it. The bailiffs will serve them before the 14th. Something. Now, judging from how the courts have dealt with the Atuguba, uh, Atubiga rather, and Ken Crunchy on similar matters, it would be fair to assume, wouldn't it, that... The MPP General Secretary and his colleague are in trouble. Well, Israel, I'll start by saying that this is my wish. I wish that their lords had advised themselves. They said that they were going to advise themselves, and I wish that they had advised themselves the, to the 
uh, extent that they would want to ignore uh, those comments because of what I say is the, the passage of time and the general change in the attitude of commentators and the manner in which they go about commenting on the petition, especially after Atubiga and the Ken Crunchy uh, punishment. Uh, on that score, I think that uh, maybe they should have advised themselves not to pursue this any further. But it is uh, their legitimate decision to make, and they have made the decision in the manner they have made it. Now, Israel, what is happening is that there are two ways of punishing contempt, as you may have heard me explain before. One is to punish contempt through indictment, and the other is to punish contempt through summary proceedings. Through indictment, if the court had come to the decision that this uh, matter which is alleged to be contemptuous of the court, if it was not clear and it was ambiguous on the face of it, it would have decided that their punishment or the process of hauling them before the court should be by indictment. What I mean by that is that it would have referred the matter to the Attorney General, then Attorney General, according to the rules of court, would have that now filed the committal processes or initiate the committal processes for these individuals to come to court and to answer to the charges that are being put against them. Now, they didn't take that option. The option they have taken is to punish summarily. You punish contempt and contempt of the nature we are talking about, criminal contempt of scandalizing the court. You punish it summarily, and the court has power to do so. You do so when the matter that is being complained of as contempt is clear and unambiguous on the face of it. So this is what is going to happen. They will appear, and you have seen previous ones before. They will seek to explain if they want to explain their positions. They may deny if they feel that uh, the comments attributed to them are not theirs or the context in which they are being attributed are not correct. They may deny it, or they will straight away seek to purge the contempt by pleading with the court to tamper justice with mercy. And this is where, Israel, I think you're going to have a bit of a difficulty on the part of Sir John. The difficulty is that the standard for determining Sir John's guilt and the punishment that he should receive will be a very high standard because he is a lawyer, he practices the trade or the profession, and that is where he makes his living. That's what is expected as someone who has been called to the bar. And for that matter, he is expected to know better and avoid getting into contempt or being led into that sin by some other else. All right, so in other words, it's going to be a lot more difficult for uh, Sir John to, you know, get out of this news. You hear the common, you know, uh, uh, saying that uh, to whom much is given, much is expected. Much is when you go to court, especially in matters of thought, for example, um, the expectation is the, 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 the point or the enormity to which you are, the a liability is fixed on you. It's a certain circumstance that is looked at. And the circumstance will be, for example, what is your level of expertise in the area in which you are being accused of? If you have so much expertise that you are normally, generally expected to have known to the right thing to do, and you neglected, refused to do it, then you suffer a heavy, a heavy penalty. Okay. All right. Yes. It's like a journalist getting into libel. You will suffer a heavy penalty than someone, a hawker or a trotter driver, who may also have committed a similar offense of libel. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Samsung Ladia. We'll wait until Wednesday to hear exactly uh, how the court intends to handle. It is, but thank you very much, oh, Samsung Ladi Ayeni. He's a legal practitioner and the host of uh, News File here on Joy News on TV and Joy FM as well. In other news, Deputy Information and Media Relations Minister Felix Kwachofu so today briefed the media on President Mohammed's visit to Malabo in Equatorial Guinea. The President is expected to attend a series of meetings and tours that will focus mainly on the maritime security of countries located along the Gulf of Guinea. 
Equatorial Guinea President Obian Nguema Mbazogo is expected to take President Mahama and his delegation on a tour to introduce them to new technologies being deployed by his country. Accompanying the president are the Minister for Defense, Mark Woyongo and Interior, Kwesi Ahoy, officials of the Ghana National Gas Company and the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum. The visit is to afford the officials an opportunity to learn and share experiences with the management of Sona Gas and other energy institutions in Equatorial Guinea who are considered to have extensive experience in the sector. Ghana has a number of important assets uh, on our seas offshore. Uh, these assets mainly have to do with oil exploration and exploitation. And in view of the need to offer some protection or adequate protection for these facilities, uh, the energy minister will be on hand to advise the president even as he makes submissions at this particular summit. President John Mahama had earlier met with his counterparts from Ivory Coast, Togo, Benin and Nigeria to discuss proposals for enhancing security in the wake of the recent increase in piracy along the Gulf of Guinea. He's also expected to have articulated Ghana's views on the issue of maritime security along the Gulf of Guinea. Ghana has over the last three years upgraded the equipment stock of the Ghana Navy and recently established a police marine unit to check piracy and protect the country's oil installations and maritime boundaries. Excellency, in view of the fact that he has actively been involved in this effort to enhance the nation's security, especially on our territorial waters, uh, is well pleased to make meaningful contributions at this particular summit. President Mahama is expected back in the country on Saturday, August 10. Well, President John Mahama has been on that tour of Equatorial Guinea's Punta Europa gas complex in Malabo. The complex is made up of Equatorial Guinea LNG, which produces liquefied natural gas, Marathon EG Production Limited, which provides EG LNG and another company called Amco with gas feedstock and also feeds turbo gas for local power generation. An Atlantic Methanol Production Company, LLC, Amco, one of the world's largest and lowest cost methanol producers. On the tour, where the Minister for Energy and Petroleum, Manuel Kofi Bois, Board Chair of Ghana Gas, Dr. Kwesi Boche, and CEO of Ghana Gas, Dr. George Ajasipa Yankee. Interior Minister Kwesi Ahoy and Defence Minister Mark Boyongo, who are attending the summits of the Gulf of Guinea Commission with the President, were also on the tour. We're taking a break. We have more stories coming up. Don't go away. The West African Examinations Council, YX, says it has withheld the results of over 2,769 candidates who sat for the major examination held across the country this year. In a statement signed by the Council's Principal Public Relations Officer, Agnes Te Kujo, the Council revealed that the entire results of all candidates represented by 77 schools have been withheld pending the conclusion of investigations into various examination more practices. In the same regard, the entire results of 2,769 individual candidates from other schools are being withheld. White says the withheld results will be released soon, be released as soon as the council concludes investigations into examination irregularities committed. The West African Examinations Council, WASI, has also released provisional results of 391,420 out of the 409,759 candidates that wrote this year's exams. The Forum for Education Reform, a group backed by think tank Imani Ghana, says government's decision to build new teacher training colleges instead of improving the existing ones will be a wasteful venture. The Forum is convinced that a more cost-effective and efficient way for government to achieve its objective of improving teacher education lies in the expansion and improvement of current facilities within the existing 38 colleges. 
The Forum for Education Reform, FFER, under the backing of Imani Ghana, is a group of eminent Guineans, educationists, leaders of industry, business people and researchers who have decided to voice out their objection to the plan to establish 10 new colleges of education as one of the policies to advance education. At the moment, the colleges of education are spread all over the country, so it is not a question of some uh, regions uh, don't have colleges of education, so let's put new colleges of education uh, in them. You know? And I also want to say that we've been, we've been this way before, after Nkrumah, there were 82 colleges of education, teacher training colleges. Colleges that number was reduced, and some of the teacher training colleges were converted into secondary schools. So this is another example that the current government may wish to look at. The firm contends, despite the existing colleges being recently upgraded to tertiary status, there are still persistent issues with quality. The more reason why it makes more sense to upgrade them rather than add on the firm suggests improving the facilities updating the quality of instruction infusing technology updating the teaching methods and modules amongst others the existing 38 uh, colleges are sufficient they are not uh, they haven't got the full complement of students uh, they have uh, uh, the average about 400 we can more or less double them so why build uh, 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 more uh, uh, structures, uh, schools, when you can use existing ones. Why this insistence on uh, structures and so on? It's true. In some cases, uh, there are uh, children who learn under trees and so on, which, or uh, we have shift system and all that. We should try and avoid that. But there shouldn't be this preoccupation with uh, building more teacher training, build buildings and buildings. The firm, however, agrees with governments on the expansion of existing government universities. As to the fact that the universities uh, would need expansion, there's no doubt at all. I mean, for example, only about 6% of our children go to tertiary schools. That's all the universities and training colleges and polytechnics and everything together. At our level, it should be about 20% if we are a middle income country. But... I don't think that we can do so by just increasing this number by four times, by getting more and more accommodation and other things. We must do that, but mainly we must exploit technology. The Forum for Education Reform says it is prepared to work with governments and like-minded organizations to attain the right standard for teacher training in Ghana. The fate of a 14-year-old girl who was allegedly impregnated by a man claiming to be a student of the Cape Coast University is hanging in the balance. This is because the NGO Ark Foundation, which took her in six months ago after Johnny's broke her story, says it can no longer cater for her. The girl, whose name has been withheld, was driven out of her home by her parents after she had been defiled last year. Johnny says Beatrice Edu visited the girl at the Ark Foundation home in the Eastern region and has come through with this report. So I'm in Kukrantumi, mm -hmm. uh, where the 14-year-old girl who was defiled by allegedly a Cape Coast University student has delivered a bouncy baby girl. <laughs> it's been a long journey for her. I mean, after she was thrown out of her house, uh, Joy FM carried the story, and uh, App Foundation took her in. She it's a bright Saturday morning. I meet Millicent Ohinewa, who has been taking care of this 14-year-old in a home here in the Eastern Region since Joy News broke the story in February this year. Things have not been all rosy for this 14-year-old girl, and as Millicent tells me, the foundation is financially handicapped and cannot continue catering for the girl and her two-week-old baby girl. I carry the baby who has been sleeping since my visit and she feels very heavy. And she, she told me not to cry again. And I'll not cry again so that I'll get breast milk for the baby and I'll stop crying. A long journey indeed for this 14-year-old girl. Six months ago, when Joy News met her, she was pregnant and had lost hope of ever seeing her parents 
because they had driven her away from home. She says she is hopeless and she might not be able to be the doctor or lawyer she dreamt of becoming because of her situation. Do you really believe you can get there? You have to have hope. You have to believe that you can get there. That one day somebody will come your way and help you to get to where you need to get to. Don't you think that will be the best attitude to move forward with? Yes. Oh, if the man will be telling me not to say that about nobody is willing to help me again. Millicent Ohiniwa appeals for help for this girl because she is smart and has the desire to become someone someday. As I walk on my way back to Accra, I can only wish her the best in life. My name is Beatrice Edu for Joy News. Nina Dosu tells Joy News it is still on the hand for the man who defiled the girl. Chief Inspector Georgina Sabi is the Medina Dosu station officer. And uh, we were hoping to bring you that summer, but we do not have that. Uh, we're taking a break now. When we come back, we're doing business news with Parquisi Asari. Join News Business is brought to you. Good evening and welcome to Business with me, Park Asari. In our first story, poor power supply has once again emerged as the major challenge confronting businesses. This is according to the AGI's fourth quarter barom barometer report released. My colleague, George Rafi, has been looking through this report and joins me with further details. Good evening, George. Good evening, Park So take us through this report. Well, well basically, this is a report that engages uh, chief executives of big and small businesses between 300 and then 400. Now, poor power supply again has come up for the second quarter actually. And it came up in the first quarter and it has come up again in the second quarter. And you know what happened in the past months, basically irregular power supply and it has come up again. Now, the interesting thing, the second topical issue that came up or it emerged as a major challenge for businesses was access to credit. It's not about the cost of credit. Now, these top business owners are saying that they are having difficulties getting credit from the financial institutions. So it means that the managers of the economy might have to do more in ensuring that business owners can get credit so they can use it to grow their businesses. Again, these about 70% of these business owners said that though they believe things are bad now, going forward, they think that things can improve. So though this report is saying that things are bad, I believe that Managers of the economy still can do more to ensure that things improve for businesses going forward in the, in the next quarter. Is there much difference between the second barometer report and that which was uh, given to us earlier, the first quarter? Well, not much because when you look at the, topic, the topical issue or the major thing that is confronting businesses has come up again, that is poor power supply. But again, you look at a um, high level of taxation and it has come up as the third biggest challenge for businesses. And that is a new thing you want to look at, the fact that the businesses are complaining that they are being taxed too much. They are not, they don't have a problem paying taxes, but the problem is that spread the tax and therefore so that they can operate more efficiently. So what options are available to business owners? Well, it, there are no options, Pakwasi, that managers of the economy might have to do more to improve the business environment for them, that poor power supply is a major hurdle for them. And are there any options? Well, I don't think so. Thanks very much, George Rafi, for joining us. In other news, a new law seeking to ensure that at least 10% of the electricity used in the country comes from renewable energy sources by the year 2020 is now in force. The law will, among others, require real estate developers to incorporate the generation of solar electricity and other sources into their plants. The law became necessary following what was perceived as a waste of the country's natural energy resources. 
and the government realizing that look it was important to have this particularly the fact that it was more environmentally sustainable felt that there was a need to bring a regulatory framework that would in a way guide us as to how we could meet this target of 10 percent in terms of our total generation mix communication experts at the ministry of energy edward bauer explains the new law will make investments in renewable energy lucrative this law also has composite purchase of it. If ECG were supposed to buy its total power, it is mandatory on ECG and Netco to buy a portion of their power from renewable energy, even if it is expensive or not. It is by law. It also in it uh, provides what we call the feed-in tariff. That tends to clearly indicate what the tariff regime would look like. And you have a guarantee of a number of years that you are sure that within these particular years, you are going to be getting this particular type of tariff. And also generate, it, it then guarantees your revenue stream. Work on the establishment of a tariff regime is currently underway. The target is to have a total of 10% by 2020. So by 2020, we should have 10% of our generation mix being renewable. Government has meanwhile started its off-grid installation in some senior high and tertiary institutions in the country, while some 13 million solar lanterns have already been distributed to rural communities. And that's all for the business news. My name is Pa Kwisiasari. Joy News Business was brought to you in association with Time for the very latest on the world of sports. President of the Ghana Athletics Association, Professor Francis Dodo, believes Janet Amponsa has the qualities to win a medal at the upcoming IAAF Championships in Russia. Amponsa will be Ghana's sole athlete at the championship after qualifying as a wild card, and she will compete in the women's 200 meters. The young female athlete has been in Russia since Tuesday, preparing for the Games, and Francis Dodo is optimistic Janet will make a huge impact despite her relative inexperience. Well, Janet is doing really well. I spoke to her yesterday, and um, she she's the only one representing us, unfortunately. But we're ha we're happy to have her represent us. If there's going to be anybody who represents us, I think Janet will do so really well. Um, we're looking for her to put out her, her best. I mean, Janet is at the leading sort of edge of the the new group of athletes that we we have coming through. She's not the only one. Um, unfortunately, there's quite a few of them who were close to qualifying, but none of them actually did qualify, and so we could only send one. But there's others like John Ampuma. Um, there's quite a few who are coming through and hopefully a couple of years from now Ghana will be able to smile again in terms of athletics. This is a message to all our athletes. I mean, Janet, um, last year what we did was we put our home-based athletes in camp in, in just not too far from here and they used to train here twice a day and so on and so forth. And Janet ran some really fantastic times last year culminating in her coming in fifth at the, in the 200 at the World Junior Championships. Uh, she ran so well last year that she got a scholarship to go to Mauritius, right? And so she was on an IAAF scholarship. All the races she ran this year in Mauritius were slower than her, say, top seven or top eight times from last year. The point I'm trying to make is going overseas doesn't guarantee anything, right? Let's stay with athletics. And the mating edition of the Cowbell National Junior Elite Athletics Championship entered its second day at the Oak Stadium in a crowd with participants from the 10 regions of Ghana competing in high jump, long jump, 400 meters, and 1,500 meters medley for boys and girls, respectively. The Eastern Region and Greater Accra regions lead on the medal table after both the next five gold each in the event honored so far. A total of 18 competitions will be honored before the culmination of the event, with the first three athletes in each event receiving a full year scholarship. Heads of Sales and Marketing of Promassador Ghana Limited, Festus Tete, and President of the Ghana Athletics Association, Francis Dodu, have been assessing the event so far. Beautiful. The weather has started out really nicely and the sun has come up and it's been a really wonderful day. Seeing so many children come from all over the country is also really wonderful for athletics. Uh, we thank Promacido, we thank Ghana Education Service. I mean, they've done what we couldn't do and it's been a really wonderful day. I think the children are enjoying it and they're running really, really well. I mean, the young girl who won the... Uh, 100 meters, uh, the time was incredible, 12, 20 something from what I understand. I haven't seen the official results, but the start, the, uh, the people at the results table gave me that time. And if that time stands out to be correct, it's a really good time for under 15. So it's been a really good day all around. Yeah. When you watch um, these inter-school games, you recognize that we really have quite a lot of talent in this country. I mean, the time that I just gave, there was a girl from, I think she was from the northern region who won the 1500. That was also a really brilliant time. Um, and so we do have, we really do have 
the talent in here and it, it bodes well for the future of Ghana. I think like I always say, the kids are doing their part, they're coming out and they're running hard and it's up to the rest of us who manage the sport to make sure that we sort of give them the support that they need, the funding, the infrastructure and, and the coaching and all those kinds of things and they're doing their part and it's up to us to step up and do our part too. Yeah. It's a good beginning. Uh, I believe we can improve a lot of things but for the modest seed we have sown, I'm satisfied with what we've seen today. Level of performance, I believe it to improve. This is the first uh, such event and there have not been a lot of competitions for this athletes to look forward to. And I hope that with a package we've put together, scholarships for people making some minimum national times, uh, it will encourage athletes to compete more keenly. Firstly, guys, it began this evening. Bayern Munich beat Mönchengladbach with three goals to one. And as well, in the French League, uh, Paris Saint-Germain drew one all in Montpellier. Manchester United lost again in preseason to Sevilla by three goals to one. That'll be all for sports tonight. My name is George Adi Jr. Have a good night. Sports was brought to you in a After spending an intense 75 days in the Big Brother house, Ali Kim Kumoji has become the first Ghanaian in history to cruise through to the Big Brother finale. The Ghanaian managed this stunning coup following a convincing display during the head of house task. Our in-house entertainment critic, Della Aglanu, joins me in the studio to give me details about that. Uh, and, you know, I, I, when I, I last spoke to you about uh, Ali Kim and his chances in the, in, you know, of, of making it to the final, you were pretty confident that he was going to make it into the final. And now he's going to win it. Now you're saying he's going to win yes. it. Yes. Okay. How did he make it? Okay. Uh, this afternoon, they had a, a head of house tax. Before then, there's what we call the power of no where a housemates get to select one housemate and say, you know what, I don't want you to take part in the head of house tax. That one, they do a pre-tax before then. And he gave the power of no to BIMP. So BIMP was out. So they had to throw that, a game of that today. And although he didn't hit the target, his was the closest, and therefore they gave him the head of house tax. Okay. Now, what does it mean? And why are they saying then that he's made it into the final? Because uh, we have a few more weeks to go. Yes. Okay, interestingly, Alicum doesn't know that Sunday he is not up for eviction. He thinks probably it's possible they've swapped to put him up, but he's not. So it means that this weekend he's not going. Next week, Monday, he's going to be head of house. They're going to have nominations on Monday. Clearly, even if they nominate him, he can save himself and put somebody up. Okay, so, so that's why we're concluding so that he's made it into the final. Yes. What does he do? Well, he's made it so far. I mean, what does he do now to win the final prize? There are some alliances probably he's, he's, he would have to look at. How does he go about that? Uh, at this point, I think he just has to stay himself because already you're head of house. It's not that you're just an ordinary housemaid where you have to pray that they don't put you up or swap you. You see, the, the reason why I'm saying that is because it's critical as head of house who you nominate or you swap, okay, when it comes to the very final day of voting because uh, if a country thinks that you swapped the wrong guy, they're going to vote against okay. you and yeah. you're going to lose uh, their votes. Okay, clearly this weekend we have Feza, Cleo and Delish up for uh, possible eviction. I think Feza will leave, but Cleo and Delish is still a bit shaky. I can't pinpoint specifically because the two of them, I think they are at par. So we just have to leave that for Africa. But you see, next we're going to have BIMP. BIMP is definitely going to nominate Elikam no matter what. That one is constant. So imagine if it comes to saving, Elikam will never save BIMP should BIMP pop out for eviction. He'd rather he rather save somebody and put BIMP up. So for BIMP issue, we are, we are sorted out. Now it will be left with Nigeria and South Africa. I think they are key. But you see, when we go into the finale with Nigeria, the two Nigerian housemates and South Africa, I think it's going to be... In our, favor. Uh, in our favor, because you were saying the other time that the votes are going, to, Nigeria is going to split, split their votes, but they will still it. give it to one person. Okay, that's what is going to happen. Then they will later count if there's a tie. They were going to count and say, okay, you know what, this particular individual had this number of votes, maybe hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, one million votes. This person had one million, probably plus, and therefore they will give it to the person. Okay. That's what is going to happen. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Della Aglanu. He's our uh, in-house entertainment critic, and he is, uh, or he works with my joy, or he, he is with my joy online.com now in other news uh, there is no doubt that video sharing site youtube has become the preferred medium for artists to promote their music but have you ever wondered how well ghanaian videos are faring on the site here's a look at top five videos from july 2013. all right so you just saw the top five music videos uh, making waves for july 2013 on youtube uh, that's for showbiz on social media, as I promised you, we're going to bring you, I think, the number one video on social media 
right now. Uh, but that comes after this short break. The government will soon set up the PKI, Security Architecture, to provide an increased level of confidence for online comments and communication and collaboration. Why is the speech I edited? This is not the speech I edited. No, I can't read this. Hmm? And that's what I was working on this morning. I edited the speech, and this is different. And so I'm trying to speak from my mind, so maybe I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> the government is very much commented and concerned about cybersecurity. We appreciate The government will soon set up the PKI, security architecture, to provide an increased level of confidence for online comments and communication and collaboration. Why is the speech I edited? This is not the speech I edited. No, I can't read this. Hmm? And that's what I was working on this morning. I edited the speech, and this is different. And so I'm trying to speak from my mind, so maybe I'll do that. <laughs> is very much commented and concerned about cyber security. We appreciate Right, that happens to be the Deputy Minister, uh, Communications Minister, Victoria Hammer, and it's a no comment video. That's why I'm not saying anything. Uh, that's it for the bulletin. Before we go, the quick run through our top stories. MPP General Secretary Sir John and one other have been hauled before the Supreme Court over comments considered as scandalous by the court. President John Mahama has met some of his colleague presidents in the sub region to discuss maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. Government's plan to build 10 new teacher training colleges has come under fire by a group which insists the existing institutions are underutilized. New law requiring real estate firms to incorporate renewable energy sources in their building plans comes into force. And in business, poor power supply and high taxes cited as topmost constraints to businesses in second quarter AGI barometer survey. That's it. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. Have a good evening.